Uh, so thank you for coming. Uh, so you, also, you already answered the question how many of you have been using Google and have you ever tried? So today I'd like to show some basic concepts and uh, some nice tips and tricks on how to use Google in a more productive way. Uh, so basically I need to, sh I need to say that uh, a year ago we decided to create a new product for Go community because we decided it's uh, mature enough to have uh, a good, good tooling support. So we decided to contribute our time to it. So today I'd like to, sh to share some basic stuff. For instance, I'd like to start with my favorite. Uh, if you have some kind of structure, for instance, this one, and you'd like to implement some kind of interface, you can just type here that it's uh, some kind of close notifier and we'll generate you a, a method for them. So in that case, you'd like to go back and for instance, you'd like to visit uh, this is method here and this is pretty obvious, nothing interesting, but all in all, you'd like to see how many other implementations of these methods you have in, on your Go path. And the basic concept of all of our IDEs and stuff is you would like to minimize your context switching. And for instance, you'd like to see what's going on underneath in these particular methods. And you can invoke some a uh, quick definition here, and you can see without losing focus what's going on in other, in other functions. So it's pretty easy, but it's uh, you no know, need to split your screen in two parts and see what's going on in this function or another one. So you can do it on spot. So as you can see, I am not using tabs, and so it's just uh, some kind of presentation mode. But actually, I'm using the same presentation mode during my routine work at, at JetBrains, so, uh, and I decided there's no need to see context in tabs. You can do it just this one. You can see all your recent files, or, or for instance, you can see all your recently edited files, or you can go back and forth just pressing, like I was going in the web browser, just visiting the previous page and next page, so it's pretty obvious, and there's no need to have a lot of bloated uh, toolbars and tabs on top of the frame. So it's, as for me, it's pretty cool. Uh, so what's next here? Uh, for instance, if you'd like to see what's going on in your file and package. You can open some kind of project structure and we have different approaches to showing your information in quick, you know, some kind of small windows, which is, which is just lightweight windows. And you can type on it inside these windows and just filter results. And for instance, I'd like to go to method main, function main here. So I just invoke this, uh, small window, understand what's going on, just filter out what I need to, and I just press enter and go to the function what I'd like to. So uh, the same approach we are using, for instance, in project structure, and would like, you'd like to go to some file symbol, and we filter out all examples here, and you can basically go to simple. So which is just a simple file, not far from here, so I have a result here, and several functions here, and for instance, you'd like to use some kind of functional programming with Go, and you'd like to return not to just a simple string here, but, uh, but something. You'd like to call a Kali and, and put inside function on it. So first of all, I can invoke some basic completion and start some printing here, but actually I'd like to filter out because ID knows that you'd like to return a string. In that case, I can invoke some kind of smart completion. Basically, it's completion based on type power information uh, across their local context, and we just filter out not appropriate functions and not appropriate variables from that. So I just look like I return a Kali, and I'd like to return a function. So basically, we can understand that you'd like to return a function here. I'm invoking a smart template here. So basically, it should be a name, and we'd like to return, I don't know, hello, and just return it. Oh, basically, I'd like to write a name here. Here it is. In that case, uh, 
I understand, I'd like to understand what other files I, I'll have, uh, I have nearby. So I see I have a simple test here. So it's pretty obvious, but there's no need to go through this not very easy way. Just you can press a special command and you can navigate to a test files. You can understand, okay, you have a single file, you have a test file nearby, and we can understand it's a simple file just correspond to you file, so to yours file. So basically we'd like to like to write a small test here and like to invoke hello and okay it should be a variable and if hello not equal Hello, go. Just I'd like to return an error here. And I'd like to return test. Sorry, I am I'm stupid here. I'd like to return a hello, go. And basically, I have my failed here. So uh, I'd like to return it again. And understand that we need to return something else, for instance, like this one or Hello and go there. Here it is. But basically, I am I am failed again. But who cares? <laughs> and actually, if we like to run all your test suite, you can filter out uh, your green results. There is no need, and we can navigate from your result list to this failed test. Uh, so. Another very, very good thing which I personally like, uh, which we have some kind of completion which will filter out all your go path and we can understand what you'd like to uh, print function here or you can just, uh, okay, print it's too many, but if you like to one, one letter, if you can put one letter from your package, you can understand, okay, you need to filter out all the packages which is FMT or stuff like that. So in that case, it's pretty easy. Uh, another wonderful stuff which I already done several weeks ago, uh, we, can, we can see a preview for constants. And if you'd like to see, for instance, some status and you'd like to see the real value of this constant, we can provide you help information right now without go losing your focus and you need no need to go to this declaration. So, and last but not least, I'd like to say very much to Florin for this very, very good example. And I'd like to show some kind of remote debug. I hope it will work. <laughs> so basically, uh, we have a simple Docker application and we'd like to run this our application inside the container. So basically it's very simple, and but we put Delph on top on it and we're running Delph and which is running our application. And right now is this Delph is listening for our remote debug. Remote debug is pretty simple. We need to just to say that just I'd like to debug something on localhost and provide a port. There's no need to add some additional mappings because I am on Mac and this application inside container which is on Linux. So basically, I'd like to remote debug this application. So we are connected, I hope, yeah. And so here it is, the list of to-dos. And I'd like to go to get to-dos and put a breakpoint here. And yeah, here it is. We can remote debug our stuff inside the container. So thank you for the Elf application to Derek Parker and thanks for Florin for that great example. Thank you.